welcome to another brand new All Access. I'm here with uh, my good friend, Lauren Balf. Lauren, how are you doing today? I'm, I'm wonderful and I'm loving your ponytail. I will oh, keep yeah. saying that you've got a ponytail with that seat until the I'm end gonna... of our conversation. <laughs> my headrest, my ponytail. Your mane. You know, letting it grow out. Mane of power behind you. <laughs> oh, COVID. So it's been, uh, you know, it's been a while since we've, we've talked and I just was looking back at everything, you know, going dating back to like when I first moved out to LA and everything. Our first interview together was in March, 2011. That is 11. a long time ago. And then yeah, actually- Going through puberty at that time, wasn't it? Probably. I know, I think we both were, <laughs> were a squeaky voice. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, our, and honestly, uh, Lauren, you kicked off this, this All Access series. You were the first composer to allow me to come to your studio. This was in I July. I saw the future, Kai, that was it, you see? <laughs> I saw the future and I saw talent, that's why. <laughs> So that was seven years ago. So thank you again, seven years ago for, for doing that. And, and it went downhill. But it anyway. went all downhill after that. Yeah. We started way too high. And then a hundred <laughs> interviews later, it's like, oh God. Yeah, who else does, who else who else discusses fake tan, eh? Yeah, exactly. Spray tans and and <laughs> granola bars. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't touched a, I haven't touched that hard stuff in years. The granola oh, okay. kept away from that. It's, it's good. <laughs> it moved on to the softer stuff. So you've done a bunch of stuff since last time we talked. We're not going to go back and look at the past. Let's uh let's just dive in. I just kind of want to dive in and, and start because and just pointing out the time difference, at how long we've been talking and how the you know we're both in this industry that's ever evolving. Um, well, especially. Yeah. But let's talk about uh, just from your point of view as a as a composer as a veteran of this industry now. How has the entertainment industry uh, changed? Oh, don't say that. <laughs> You're a veteran. <laughs> you got the grays. I'm getting the grays now. That's our veteran I, status. I, um, I got a lot. Um, has it changed? Yeah. How how have you viewed it? How has the entertainment? Uh, is it easier to navigate? Is it harder to navigate, especially for young people coming in? Like, what is the kind of your opinion of what this entertainment industry is today versus, you know, 2011 when we first talked? <laughs> I think in 2011, I thought that the holy grail was LA. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. That was the, that was the focal point of our industry. And that's right. where we had to be. And that's where you, you had to move to and live. And, and it's just, it's not that now. It's just, right. it's it's a different it's a different it's a different market. Uh, I, you know, I I think I I moved to LA because that's where the film industry was. Nothing was getting made in Britain, that's for sure. Right. So, so LA was where where you had to go, and now it's just it's just not the case. There's more, there's more there's more being there's definitely more being filmed outside LA than anywhere else. So, so I think that's been the biggest change. And then also, I think that the separation between what there used to be a snobbiness, um, there probably still is, but there was a snobbiness when I met, I remember not the last uh, award ceremony we went to, but probably the first one where I met you was, I remember somebody pointing out to me the tables and who was sitting where and the ranking system. Yeah, and they were yeah. say, they were saying so those there's the film composers they're the you know they're sitting near the front and then uh, there's the tv guys they're they're kind of like there and then there's the game ones they're kind of just they're back there and then there's the commercials they're all the way back there and then and people kind of looked at it that way and, and i think that's gone now a yeah, anybody yeah. everybody doing film wants to do games now and um and the concept of TV, you know, the standard of television is exceptional. It's it's better than most film at the moment. Absolutely. Or has been, you know, you look at True Detective. I think that was the beginning of, of uh, TV music appearing in temp schools with movies. It was like, oh, there's, the, you know, there's a, a new trend going on. So I think that's been a big change. And... and and then the other changes, I think the, the old the old goats that were getting all the, the jobs every time a big movie happened, they all got it. And it's and it's different now. Now, now, now there's anybody has got the opportunity to get it, um, which is great. So I think I think there's a lot. Uh, the whole industry has got uh, kind of turned around. Yeah, I mean, I think the last time I was at the ASCAP Awards, they seated me at the same table with you i'm like oh they put this they put the, the, I, journalist, I the journalist with you <laughs> it was asked for though 
I didn't switch any name cards, I swear. <laughs> like, huh, the, you're probably like, oh, they let this guy in. What are these doing at my table? <laughs> oh, but, but I think I think it's I think it's changed. I don't know. I don't know. If some of it's for the good. I think I think some of the things that aren't for the good, I think, is what's happened with the word content. Yeah. We, 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 we say, you know, COVID especially brought the thirst for content and so much more is getting made so more people are getting jobs which is great but they're not necessarily ready for it and they're they're, they're kind of jumping before the before that before they know how to do it and and that's ending up in in you know going backwards really because they're not they haven't got the training of how to deal with deadlines and budgets and and all of this but but there is just so much all of a sudden you've got a prime time tv show and and, and you're not ready for it so that's a negative thing yeah no I, more I, positive. yeah absolutely and i mean uh it, it definitely is making more accessible and everything but i think it's also a little bit more competitive but also I, i'd agree with you completely that la is no longer i think the i mean you went back to the uk i'm not in la anymore like we, no. we both have left we're still working in the industry and uh you know i mean you're doing phenomenal you're busy busier than you've ever been and uh so but it must be nice to be back home too and kind of being out of that uh you know I, I, as much as i love la you, you know you're talking about the egos and everything it, it is a it's a it's a, it can wear down on you it's a it's a city that wears down <laughs> it's a yeah yeah i think i think it's the I think I look. I I found LA very. I I got. I went. I got in there and I did what I wanted. You know, I learned everything I could. And but I I I never. I never kind of. I don't feel I really um, invest. Not invested in it. But I didn't join it. You right. know, I was very very much an expat. Yeah. Very yeah. much going to the King's Head in Santa Monica. <laughs> not trying new places you know it was very kind of quintessentially yeah uh, br the brit the brits so um so that was that kind of side of it and and but then also just i think it was look it's it's always a risk you know we're, so many composers are always kind of saying should i move over there then they move over there and then after a year two years then it's should i move back right and, and i get i get a i get a phone call or email every, maybe once a month from a British composer saying one of the two <laughs> and it's a difficult one because if you leave then you feel you're leaving you're giving up on your dream exactly and I think people need to not think that like I think that was I had to actually I, I had to go through that in my mind it's like if I go back home is it considered failure do you like oh you're quitting but it's like not at all I think it's uh, uh you're literally taking I think your 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 career path in your own hands and be like okay this is you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I get, like you said, you're an expat, you didn't feel part of it. And it just, you feel more at home, you feel more in your community back where you were, but also you still get to tell stories that are authentic to yourself. And, and, uh, and also well, I think just some distance yeah. helps. <laughs> but I think also you've just got to look at the bigger picture. And, and I think it, that this is what happens with age. I think the fact of what is the bigger, what is the bigger picture to your life? And you kind of right. start looking at things and, You know, we had children and then so we looked at it and said, well, the, our families are back in Britain and and grandparents. And so so you kind of start weighing up things. And but but, you know, I, I did have a long I, I, I moved over to L.A. Um, I moved over 25 years ago. Wow. I know I don't look it. I know I don't look it, Kai, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but I, I, moved, I moved over the millennium. That's crazy. And, and that's amazing. You know, so I was there and then I kind of left. I left for a bit and came back and started working for Rupert Gregson Williams. Right. And I go back again. Um, so, so yeah, you know, I, I spent, a, it, it went quickly. Gosh, when people say time flies. Oh yeah. It's, I was there for 11 years and it feels like it didn't even, it feels like it was a dream. It felt just like, yeah. like, like snap and it was, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But spe speaking of, of uh, your young age and everything, I know you have, uh, you, you know, you and I, I think it, we grew up loving the same stuff. We loved our 90s action. And of course, yes. you grew up w watching Jerry Bruckheimer and Michael Bay films and listening oh, to Hans Zimmer oh, scores yeah. and Harry. Oh, that yeah. was, uh, yeah, so you were, you have about a decade plus on me. And so that you're in, you're <laughs> harsh, but anyway, <laughs> just, just stating facts. 
<laughs> so the, the 90s for me, I was in, I was like my preteen years. I think you were your later teen, early 20s. Those are probably formative years for you do you remember so you think i was in my late 20s in the 80s no 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 90s 90s <laughs> <laughs> like mid to late 90s because <laughs> you're <laughs> yeah yeah anyway <laughs> am i wrong <laughs> no mid, mid i was a teenager yeah I was yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. Uh, for me it was like 95 96 i think for me when i started you know really kind of growing onto those the scores and you're talking about you know, you got Harry, Hans, Michael, uh, Mark Mancina, and Jan de Bont directing, Ridley, Tony Scott, all these great filmmakers and composers. Were, did those leave a lasting imprint on you? I mean, like, what do you remember from that time? And uh, I know you were already kind of in, into music, but did those shape your style or, or, or taste at all in, in, those, in those years? Not in the least. No? No, totally. <laughs> uh, uh, every, every, um, no, everything. You know, th those movies were, were uh, um, Con Air, The Rock, Crimson Tide, uh, Beverly Hills Cop, Days of Thunder, Bad Boys. Oh, yeah. These were all the movies that I, I watched and would watch continuously, yeah. um, even up to now. I've said right. it before, if, I, if it's on and on the television, that is it. I don't leave the house, I can continue watching. So that was always part, you know, it, it, was, it was Bruckheimer, Zimmer and Bay. Yeah, were, were my was my kind of my stable diet, and and I just and I just like you know I loved those I loved that genre and I I loved it and I love it I just I, I, you know there was there was these other films that kind of triggered excitement in me that you know like Wall Street that were a bit you know a bit arty maybe yeah um, but Stuart Copeland score for that just you know I, I just thought it was. I didn't know I couldn't make out what it was, but I was weird with my taste of music as a teenager because I was listening to like the art of noise and that wasn't very kind of commercial, but it was I just I I, I loved all that. So so they all of their movies were just were just you know that was the that's what made me get excited. I wasn't particularly I wasn't into the kind of the art house French noir <laughs> movies. A Nouvelle Vague wasn't an interesting. No, no. no. <laughs> Um, but I, I mean, I don't say I think those guys owe it to the you know true foes and of the world and the Godards. I mean, they became the kind of action auteurs, and you got to now you're working with them. So I mean, you started working with Bruckheimer. Uh, I think your your first film uh, with him was um, I think Geostorm. I think technically, like maybe yes. And then yeah, uh, yes. Well, well, my you know, look, so many of my relationships got formed through hands, and I was very right. fortunate with that because. I met Jerry through Hans, um, working on Pirates 2. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I met, I met Michael through Hans from working on some of his films. So, so I, uh, so, yeah, so, you know, it was, it was, I was just very, very fortunate to kind of be introduced to these people that, um, the first time I met Jerry, um, I, I was an in, I was an intern, and I was working at remote. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, you know, I was like, "Would you like a cup of tea to to any client or anyone?" And somebody had given me this book. I can't remember what it's called. Um, and it was about Don Simpson. Okay, yeah. Um, it was a famous book at the time, and I was and somebody and somebody had given it to me, and I was sitting in the kitchen, and I was and I was reading. I was reading it and this guy comes in, he sits next to me and, and I'm like turning the pages and I'm, like, I'm petrified about being in LA. Some of these stories, I was like, I'm not going to survive. I'll leave you <laughs> limping. Um, so I'm turning and reading it. And this guy says to me, are you enjoying the book? And I said, a sort of, but I'm at, I'm at the certain part in the story involving a, a toilet. And I'm like, Oh God, I just don't want to, I'm not too sure. Because he's some, some type of, he's, he was some guy, that guy anyway so I'm sitting there and he walks away and one of the other interns came up and said you know who you were speaking to I said no he said Jerry Bruckheimer and I just and and then I was like gosh that I I am I am in Los Angeles now yeah. you know it was a, but he, but um and I think about I think that every time I think it continuously when working with Jerry um that um you know I we when when working 
Jerry loves music. He does. He does. He's got such a great passion for it, and and he he's um, he he enjoys the process of it so much. So whenever we we just finished working on a film, Secret Headquarters, and he just he he, he comes in, and he sits on a chair right you know just behind me, and he'll be there for you know six seven hours, and he just he just loves the whole process of. Uh, um, of it but I'm continuously whilst writing I've got I, I when I write I talk uh, I, I like people talking around me. I'm an only child so normally if I'm writing by myself I have the television on I've got, I've got to have constant noise um, and um, I'm always asking I'll just say so how did how did that how did the theme from Beverly Hills Cop get come get originated you know and all these stories and it's just it's it's you know it's it's just very fortunate to kind of be able to kind of be working with them now and the same and the same with michael it's just yeah these people yeah. these people these people kind of yeah were created that the reason why i'm here now but they created what what we all love watching and and um yeah and and the same you know the same with hands it's like um I, they they they've created that the soundtrack to those to every decade <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Visually and audibly. It's, it's amazing. And yeah, now you get to work with them. And uh, before we jump into Top Gun, I just want to briefly touch on Ambulance, which again, another fant you know, fantastic collaboration with Michael. Yeah. Um, and uh, Ambulance has a lot of uh, going on in terms of score, in terms of textures, rhythms, and kind of that electronic uh, soundscape, but if you compare it, sure it to, is. <laughs> it's, a, it's, an, it's an intense nonstop, you know, score. So I'm curious, uh, comparing it to something like Fallout, uh, which is a completely different approach, uh, how would you compare the two in terms of like at, at least let's just look at uh, doing action set pieces, you know, which are almost you know, a three act structure story in themselves. When you're doing like a massive set piece, especially with you know with Tom Cruise doing his stuff, but also Michael Bay definitely knows how to direct a, an action set piece. So when you're scoring in those two different approaches, what would you say would be the difference, and what do you think makes it successful? At least the music to get the job done. If I knew how to make it successful, I'd be doing it more regularly. Um, I'm not, you know, interesting. Both both of those projects, I have to rely. I don't have to. I have relied greatly on the music editors, which yes. just don't, don't don't get mentioned enough. And Cecile on Fallout, really. Um, when I was doing, I had to do a commentary. Um, I had to go through the whole film. Yeah, right. you're on the Blu-ray. You have your own tr commentary track. Yeah, cool. I know Chris uh, likes to do those for the composers. And, and I wasn't, and I, 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 I wasn't quite prepared for, you know, kind of for it. And I, I got into the room, and it's like, okay, um, um, and the funny thing was that anytime any of the kind of the great sequences, it's like, okay, we're coming up to the bathroom fight, and uh, and first there's no music in it, so it's like, yeah. oh, okay, so, um, but then all the other kind of the the kind of quintessential kind of great scenes. It would be, I would say, well, um, that idea came from Cecile, um, the music editor. Cecile had a, took a suite of mine and kind of was like working with it. She put it in this scene and then the next scene would come up. And, I, and I'd say, uh, yeah, that also came from Cecile. She had this idea. Um, and then, of course, Eddie also, Hamilton, Eddie had, you know, was tracking a lot. There was no temp with that. Right. So, so Chris, Chris, Chris created a temp with my music. Oh, so wow. I kind of. I got that. I I really kind of I got that job. I I pitched. I really pitched hard for that job because I kind of knew. I knew it was out of. I, I knew it was out of my league, and mm -hmm. and I kind of just felt I've got to. There's only so much you can just talk about all the time, and I just yeah. thought right, I'm just going to go write, and and then so then that started them kind of. Creating a temp and seeing that I I was. I could do this and um so that's how we did that and then and then the kind of the same was with ambulance with Alex Gibson you know Alex really um I have to say when I went when I went and saw the the final film I, I music editors just don't get enough credit they don't and I've interviewed a couple of them and they really and just get more of their process and it's it's so yeah. interesting they're, they're really composers they can be their composers pure collaborator you know like that yeah well, I, I always look at it, you see, I always look at it as the music editor works for the editorial director. Okay. 
I don't look at them as working for us. Okay. For some I, because I think they're living with them. They, they, right, right, they've right. They've got a room next to the, to editorial, so they so they're living and breathing all the information that's that's happening. Right. That we don't hear about. It's like and as the and probably as the picture is changing too, which of course is always happening. You know. Yeah. <laughs> And, and they're, they're all they're able to continuously keep um, figuring out tastes and so so again with ambulance started writing that before he where Michael was filming so so we were kind of just talking a lot about it and uh, so 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 I you know I, again with ambulance I, I I don't feel I can take that much credit for it because I I feel that Alex really was. You know, he was taking drum beats from one piece of music, the bass line from another one, the top line of the, you know, he was just creating this, this and the same like Cecile does. It's, it's, yeah. it's, they have a box of toys and they start doing things. And also because they, especially with Ambulance, the, the, the edit is moving so fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's it's nonstop. <laughs> there's multiple editors on it and, and, and Michael's Michael's cutting very quickly, and and it's it's better to have a piece of music written so that they can put it in and see if it works than writing because by the time you've sat down to write the cue, it's already changed. Absolutely. So, so so I think the concept of and I think you get the purists that don't like the concept of sweets and they feel that it's but it's uh, it's it, it that's. Um, that's just not the real world now. No, the, the, and I, and for me, I think I, I for me, because I'm, you know, I'm not a composer, so I come from it from a filmmaking aspect, like from a different aspect of it. Yes. And for me, like I think music helps create the edit. I think that's why temp is always like the 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 bane of people's existence. But if you provide a suite to be able to, you know, cut up and use as a temp, essentially, and sort of kind of building the the main foundation and then going in and fleshing fleshing uh -huh. that, I think that helps the picture immensely. And an uh, editor, uh, the the editors like it. Making yeah. sure that you do your sweet print your stems also because they want right. to start digging into it and 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 massaging it. So so I think it's I think I think music's got to evolve the same way as editing has. Yeah. The, the, the concept of a new cut can happen overnight, and if you're kind of just oh it's it look it's the like the concept of teams. It's yeah. um uh, you know the the nonsense that has been being said recently regarding it i just i think it's out people out of touch or people just uh, uh, people out of touch uh, or people just not working yeah they're not in, they don't know it they don't they're not they're in not, here they don't get it. in the room and they don't they don't understand no. yeah and 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 the nature of these the reason you know the funny thing is is that i i was brought up working i've always worked in 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 teams when i worked for commercial jingle houses there was always a group of you um yeah. and um and the funny thing is that i always look at it is that you know when whenever for 15 years of doing additional uh, writing for hands whenever a cue got played and the director said that's fantastic he was the first to point you out and yeah. say he did he did that mm -hmm. um and and i and that's how I've got a relationship with Terry and 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 my, Michael, you know, because it's about it's about encouraging people and but you need you do need a team around you and 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 having 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 spent a long time being the person that gets brought in to fix things, I perfectly well see that those that say they don't have teams do. Oh yeah, because I see it and and and, and you know it, it's just. There's nothing to be shameful about it. It's, no, it's, and there's nothing. I yeah. I mean, if it's for some reason music, I I don't know why there's that stigma where it has to be just a singular person doing singular things. Where it's like if you look at any department on a, on a production, especially the with the, I mean editorial departments, uh, visual effects departments, and yeah, you have a visual you know person maybe kind of the the lead of it, and then but you have a whole team that are contributing and putting their voices into it too, and it's such a massive effort. No, yeah. I know. I I worked in a film a few years ago. Nine editors wow yeah one got, one got credited but there were nine on it that all and now they all got additional but but they were more d d than additional you know they were taking Absolutely. whole reels over and and i and and i think i i, I do think that um you know I, I i think 
that an article came out just before the Oscars about you know basically slandering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. I remember that article. And it, yeah, yeah. And it was, and it was just, it really was just, it was, uh, you know, coming reading it, it was bitter, and it was so misunderstood, and it was just ill researched because yeah. the concept the weird thing is the concept of the ghostwriter i i don't i don't know what i'm hearing it more now i don't know what that means i know what an additional composer is because right i did right. it for long enough but the ghost thing seems to make out i think morally if you're if somebody's doing it also the the way it was described no you're not even getting paid you're just you're basically yeah. just doing it for bread and water yeah, for expo exposure, that's the, the, <laughs> the term that gets thrown around that I think frustrates a lot of young composers. <laughs> like, oh, you need to do it for exposure, but no, but but you have people like Hans who do give credit, like you said, and I mean, we just finished the, the Weatherman album and every track has every yes, person, everyone, yeah. we have the tracks, everyone who worked on it on each track and Hans was so generous about, you know, talking with Jimmy and everybody like- Jimmy and Hey, so, yeah. And, yeah, and, Jack, and it, you know, it, it was a band effort. It was a big band effort, you know, yeah. Uh, I know. And I, and I think he, you know, I think he's never kind of drilled that into us as in his, you know, the, the, his oh God, pupils sound pretentious, but you know, what <laughs> we are. Um, it's not being drilled into us, but it's, right. it's about how you treat people. Yeah. And, and the fact is, is that you, you know, a lot of the relationships uh, were bonded through, through him. So I think it's just, um, and the filmmakers, you know, the shoot, the studios need to feel confident in you. Yes, that's absolutely. really that's a that's a big thing that kind of um, gets forgotten about. You could be the best writer in the world, um, but uh, and there's many of them, um, and they don't deliver on time, or they deliver subpar thing, and and their word gets around very very quickly. I I was I, I'm kind of shocked about how quickly it gets around oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> people <Gossip>. talk <laughs> yeah and it, it gets changes to ears ears and uh but I'll, I'll just let you know lauren first just from my perspective of being there and everyone who's worked with you and i don't think I, i've met a single person that said anything negative about you and just how how you treat your team and and i think that's such an important thing and how i, I just i mean just you talking about music editors you right mean now, talking to my mother that's why talking to your mother <laughs> yes <laughs> But the fact that you just talked about music editors and giving all the credit to them, that's something I would never expect a composer to say. Or the fact, just look at Bad Boys for Life, how you embrace Mark's music and put that center stage. You know, I don't think any composer, you know, because no, you're such a fan of that, you know, it's like, you know what's you right know, for the, the picture. The thing is, is that I think it's because I look, I, I've looked at, and, and I've asked people, and, and I know, I know, I know some, I know, I know, friends have said to me one of the reasons why they don't use themes sometimes connecting to other people is because it means they lose cue sheet yeah money <laughs> and, it means that it, and and it's like oh my god you're literally thinking that's the ethos of what we're meant to be doing here is to kind of be earning money to me you know i learned i learned a lot on on um on terminator genesis because right. we, we 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 spent ages figuring out when do you do it when do you do Brad's theme, where it's just not there for no reason. You're using it for an for a purpose, and so that the the audience feels it, and you kind of go, yes. Yeah, and the same yeah. was with Bad Boys because it it wasn't in Bad Boys too. No, yeah, Trevor Score didn't have any of Mark's stuff. Yeah, no, and and who knows why? Um, and it, and and it was kind of obvious with three. It was just you, you wanted. Um, and every and every friend of mine that's not musical, you know, they all go da 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 da. You know, they, <laughs> they, they they all remember it, and that and that it's it's like I get annoyed when they make a you know you make a a Star Wars or a Harry Potter video game and you don't do the theme. Do the theme. Yeah, that's what musical continuity. Have. Yeah, that's what oh. people love and. It's it's you're you're you you love the story. It's all about the story, and you know. And for some, you know, when you jump into a team like that, or let, it's a good segue to get into Top Gun. You're taking over now. I was this, leading it. You're going into this amazing. Uh, you know, there's so much uh, nostalgia and emotion from people uh, who were from the original, especially with Harold's music and uh, oh. and the. I mean, the score, the, the the song choices. I mean, Danger Zone. I mean, we're, we are. Uh, Danger so, Zone. <laughs> Danger Zone alone has got enough material to be. To, to milk you know yeah. it, it's it's 
it's um uh, yeah you know it, it, it's and it's it's those things li like harold's theme um I, th I think you've got to wear two hats sometimes as a composer because i, I know i did with mission was was you can be too clever for your own good sure and, and, and i've and i've and i've heard it where it's like well this is the mission impossible theme and you don't recognize it so you're like what's the point <laughs> you, you, it's a great thesis paper but it's not meaning anything to to us as fans so so it's about trying to kind of analyze it where it still means something and and with that top gun anthem Harold's theme all you need is da 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 yeah and <laughs> now you can do something else <laughs> right it, um, but it just it means a lot and also I think very much like the film you don't need to have seen the original so you don't need to kind of be purely focused on on the theme you can you know abbreviate from it but sure, but danger zone yeah. Uh, danger zone we 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 saw we've we've used also so it's um and, i mean yeah I, I, actually i think i wanted lego batman i did get i did get in the original tv show i got the but i mean speaking of top gun i mean we were just talking about teams and this seems like it's like a lot of your worlds combining into this amazing team that you got to work with of course with uh, joseph kosinski kind of leading the charge uh, you got jerry bruckheimer tom cruise and you know chris mccrory as a producer and writer and um so talk about this 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 movie and how it came to be i mean you have you're working alongside harold uh, lady gaga Hans zimmer it seems like a, a very big musical collaboration so what was the oh, bad list eh? not a bad list <laughs> not a bad list you got a power anthem to work with from from lady gaga you got this amazing you know you got hans in there bringing the the goods and then harold's uh, iconic uh, themes and and uh so tell us where do you fit in with this like how was the collaboration working with everybody and what was the goal musically for the film well the weirdest thing we were talking about that a couple of days ago I think I think I think we have to go back like three years ago. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's been a while since this was announced and then shelved and you know. <laughs> yeah. So so we so so um I was to no, I could be wrong, but I think I was on Bad Boys <laughs> for life three years ago, maybe two two years ago. You're yeah, know. because I remember your it came out, I think January 2020. I remember it was the last movie I think I saw in theaters before yeah. everything shut down. I I remember that actually pretty well. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So, yeah. so I would have been on that. Yes, the year before. Um, so um, Har Harold um, Harold was at. Um, it's funny actually. Bob Badamy was working on it with Harold okay. in the beginning yeah. when I was still on Bad Boys, and Bob came in. Uh, Jerry was in, and Bob was in, and Bob had, has been there from right the beginning. I think. Bob may have been on American Gigolo, maybe it was Jerry's big first film. Um, right. And uh, Bob said, oh, "Do you want to do you want to come over and meet Harold?" And I chickened out. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I kind of thought, "Oh, I don't know. I'm going to say something uh, because you know Harold's. I all of us at school used to that be the only thing we could play on the piano. Da 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 da." <laughs> Everybody played that on the piano at school. Um, so I kind of, I know, I, I don't know. Anyway, so then I, then, and then I kind of, I, I, I had to take time. I, I lost, my, my father was, was very ill. So yes, I kind I of, I stopped, I stopped, I kind of quit for a, a, a while. Um, and I kind of finished uh but there's a good example of needing teams in life because i kind of if it hadn't been for my team i would have never got through bad boys because i kind of just left yeah. um but so gone for a while and there and then and then um so harold was in la hans was in la and then they reloc they relocated to london um and then and then I was back. I was I was back. I left Scotland, and I I can't came back to London. And then, and then, and then I got. I I basically, you know, Jerry had been talking about it. Hans had been talking about it, especially because he knew my relationship with Chris and um, and Tom um, after Fallout. Right. Um, 
and uh, so hands are, you know, hands are kind of just said, uh, do, you, do you fancy kind of, you, I think it's always do you fancy? Uh, and um, when you get asked that, you know it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's, it's never not been fun. Exactly. Um, so uh, because we were, I think I think I may have started the mission, Mission Impossible. Then I so, so um, in London. So so we were kind of we were all together in London that end, and then and then Hans went back to LA for a period of time. It's uh, you know because of COVID, there was all this. Oh, yeah, but then, so then that, yeah. Hans was working with uh, Lady Gaga in LA, and then um, yeah, so that was kind of Jerry, Tom, Hans. That was how I got invited into this the the, the mega band. <laughs> so for for the for the score of the film, uh, you know, everyone, you know, I mean, just looking at what the that original film is and how it has tested through time even though it was kind of you know back in the day it was like almost trying to be you know almost like showing a show a little show a commercial for the navy kind of thing but also tony scott bringing his uh an, and jerry bring kind of an artistic approach to it to turn it into an entertaining action film as well it wasn't a big it wasn't a big hit and when it got it released. wasn't yeah it, it, it definitely i think built up over time and and just the just but there was so many of the ingredients were there so yeah. for for this film was it so much trying to I guess what was the goal? Was it trying to do something new and different and modern that fits in today's audience, or what, and how much were you guys going back, especially musically, to touch back on on everything? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I, I don't think we can. I I think it wasn't about kind of trying to kind of for the sake of it. Okay, mm -hmm. let's do something modern. You know, the thing is, is that when list when you when you listen to the beginning of of um, the Top Gun anthem, um, that it could have been. I suppose the electric guitar is the thing that 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 dates it potentially right. depends on where you're from uh, <laughs> but at the beginning you know it's, it's called retro now the style of the, the yeah. electronic drums and everything it, it's so I think it, it it wasn't it we never kind of also because of covid it's interesting it kind of started changing the way we were looking at the music because there was no orchestras yeah yeah we, we, I, I had, when I finished Black Widow, I was the last, I was the last session at Abbey Road. Wow. To, the, the following day, they shut down for, I think, yeah. four months or something. So, and then when everybody started opening up, you could only have 30 musicians or maybe 40 or something. And, and so, so, so recording it was kind of affected by COVID also. Every, all the musicians were, were everywhere based everywhere yeah. and so they had to kind of get recorded separately and um and and there was a kind of so so yeah looking at it it was about um being look ha hans could have easily created a brand new school yeah and a, and and a brand new theme and and everything which would have been just as fantastic but the fact that you know he brought Harold in and wanted Harold involved with that, I just thought was fantastic. And and I hope people feel that we've brought you know re not reinvented the themes, but just kind of woken them up to a, a different um, fan base to enjoy of Harold's yeah. music because it, Harold's music meant a lot to to us. Um, and I hope now the the next generation. So when you were, yeah, and, and you've, you know, you've worked with other people's themes in the past. We talked about Terminator and Bad Boys. And so when you're in this and there's a lot of uh, people's thematic material working and you're trying to, how, what's the secret to making it cohesive? So it doesn't, so it sounds like one, do, do you just kind of, does everyone agree like, okay, we're focusing on these sounds and we're, that's going to be kind of the overarching thing. And how do you blend everybody's voice to make something that is a, you know, cohesive journey from start to finish? Well, I think it's difficult. I think also then, you know, that then when everybody kind of was in London after maybe a year of, of everybody working on the school, then then um, then the Lady Gaga song arrived and that really changed a lot of things. Yeah, um, it, it changed things that pro were needed and that was missing and you know it's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a love song but it's it's more than that it's a song it's a song about yeah the, the love of aviation the love of flying the love of escapism 
and that brought a brand new kind of concept to, to the school um, that um that that we were all missing you know so so it was uh, so variations of that appears throughout throughout the film also um so i i think i think connecting it i i think it's about you know, sonically knowing knowing your instruments knowing your your palette but the connecting tissue is the themes yes yeah I, that's what i that's how i look at it you know because we don't use the guitar all of the time. We may uh, maybe only use it oh, once, maybe. <laughs> um, so the argument is, well, that's not connecting tissue any longer, yeah. but it doesn't matter because the theme's there. Right, absolutely. And uh, I do just I just do want to bring up briefly, you know, I think there's a lot of, there was confusion about the cover coming out and names and misprints and just setting this the record that it is an alphabetical listing of everybody who contributed. It's such a wonderful musical effort from, uh, from everybody, and um, and it just seems like that you guys went through hell because it went it was through COVID and everything and trying to make it work. And 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 we were talking beforehand about the importance of being, you know, being able to be in the room with people and stuff like oh. that, and and yeah, how yeah. it would have changed probably uh, so yeah. many things. Yeah, and 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 having the time, the was, time was, was beneficial. We had the same on Fallout when when Tom did that did the jump. Oh, when he broke his and, foot, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and 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 you know that that got extra time to not necessarily try to do stuff, but to sit right. back and reflect and and how can we improve this? So so it you know it, it's been a long time and um, but we, yeah we we've been we were throughout throughout it throughout the whole of covid you know those two years still all working on it and, and yeah and working on it working on it even this year i know that's i mean yeah you mentioned the time being able to and yeah. the reviews are fantastic so congratulations i i, I don't think it's impossible to make a, a, a non-entertaining bad film with jerry and tom and you and hans and gaga and harold i mean it's seems like the the blockbuster and i'm sure it's exciting that you're you're uh, you probably are excited that tom held out from streaming so people can go see it oh. and feel and feel it in the theaters you know <laughs> thank, but, but thank goodness thank goodness yeah. some, somebody just stood up to the concept because right. if, if not we're gonna we'll just we'll lose it we'll, we'll lose this art form that that is different it is yeah uh, it's a different experience you know like all of us during covid we all kind of went and kind of said, right, I'm getting a bigger TV. <laughs> and, and uh, right, don't need to go to the cinema any longer. Got to, you know, get some speakers and put them around our heads and we like, see, this is simple, it's just the cinema. But, but I just, I, you know, just sitting there watching a film and laughing and then nobody- <laughs> Yeah, no one's laughing with you. <laughs> Nobody's laughing with me, but nobody, normally that happens. Normally that's, yeah, that's just as your everyday Lauren, I know. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but there was no interaction and, and there was no, and then when something amazing happened, you go, wow, nothing. And 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 the, my first kind of proper film experience was going to see Ambulance last month at the Odeon oh, yeah, yeah. In, in Leicester Square. And you just, you felt the whole place erupt. And uh, it, it made you remind yourself why cinema is important. And, and of course, you know, I think what it's done is eliminate certain films uh, that, are probably going to go more streaming now because it's like well it's not a cinematic it's a great story but is it a cinematic right i think there's definitely space for both i think the, the but the theatrical experience is uh i mean i remember i went to go see dune you know at the air and space museum i'm definitely going to do that with top gun what a better place to see it in the imax of the air and space museum here in the uh, on virginia where they have this massive screen so I'm, i can't wait to to yeah. experience it that way <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but it, but it is, and also I think a film like Top Gun, you just you sit there and you're going, that's real. Yeah, the practical. Yeah, every you got you got the whole team that you work with. There's all practical, and the fact that yeah, are you even are you even like? <laughs> I'm sure you've already seen everything going on in Mission Impossible. I mean, does Tom Cruise? How does he still wow you every time you work? I, I, and <laughs> well, I, I have to say that the trailer that will be coming out. Yeah, but when's that dropping? Is that coming with Top Gun? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> it it is. It's it's just you you sit and smile. Yeah. And it may and 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 
you sit there and you go, gosh, this, you know, the, the audience are going to have a blast, which we, yeah. you know, which we, which we need to. It's, I know, absolutely, and it ties, and this ties everything. Good way to close everything out because this touches back to what we started with, talking about what we loved growing up and you know in our youth, looking at the '90s movies, which are all practical. You know, the the action films. They had, yeah. you know, CGI was at its infancy, so they weren't relying on you know, Michael Bay and Jerry and Simon West and Tony Scott, Ridley Scott, they all, John yeah. Young Bond, everything is practical. And uh, yes. even something like Twister, even though they use CGI for the storms, but like the destruction and everything, it's still, it's practical sets and it's so, throw in, it's just- Throw in speed now, Kai. Throw, throw in, in speed, 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 yeah. I mean, I I credit speed more than anything to really, or Terminator 2 as well, in 1991 that was, but like that really kicked off, you know, even though there was CGI in Terminator 2, there was so much practicality around the CGI. But, you know, but also there were stories. It's not the same the all about the past, but it's the same what's happening with video games. There's a story to it that yeah, you, you can invest it in. You need the and, character, uh, yeah. And, and I think that everybody knows the tricks now, for, you know, how to do this. And, and, and you look at some of the movies that come out in the last year, some of them visually enriching, but there's nothing to grab onto. And, and, and I think that's definitely with Top Gun and, and, and Mission that the story is at the, is at, is at the heart. Yes. And um, I think that's what we love. Why we love the movies wasn't just because they were action spectacles, but we were emotionally invested. And yes. that's what keeps us. And I think that's why people are emotionally invested into top, the first Top Gun and why yes. it has lasted, you know, you know, has been part of the zeitgeist since it came out. Or it eventually did, but, yes. <laughs> but it's a, uh, and no, no, you got but, to... but, but but with this it's it's the same it's 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 very much the action equals the emotion yes. in regards to what you're going to walk away with it's it's spec it's it's spectacular and that's what i love about all the things you do lauren and, and why I, I love your music and and your team that you work with and everyone around you and uh and I want to th thank you again for taking. I've got the time. them off camera. You see, you got I'm them not off that, camera. I don't yeah. want to involve everybody. <laughs> Keep it down back there. <laughs> that's you know but, that's. But this is how this is kind of the weird thing is that I, it's it's turning quite solitude now because of COVID. You know, I've yeah, in a room by myself where before uh, we you know you used to kind of have everybody pop in and interns pop in to sit and watch and learn. And everybody's not getting that experience now because you yeah, know i mean that's what remote control i think when hans's idea was to have a community yeah, yeah a, like a village a village that everyone can support each other and yeah and learn from each other and uh yeah and i think isolation keeps that yeah that stunts that progress i think yeah uh, the, the whole creative process is stunted at, yeah you know until we can get back to that whole you know, we're still restricted with musicians the choirs are restricted still so yeah so it's um no but we'll get back to it we'll get back to it kaya <laughs> but the next time i see you in 11 years time we'll be back okay and now our next interview in 11 years yeah <laughs> one day I'll, I'll be vacationing in london we'll do this in person so <laughs> absolutely well i did go back to america i did go back there i know you do but i'm not in la anymore so i can't, I can't just drive down to santa monica boulevard and sit in your room anymore <laughs> But uh, Lauren, I wanted to uh, thank you again for your time. And of course, my pleasure, Kaya. So lovely chatting. seeing you. Didn't so see lovely. enough of that ponytail during the interview. I know, I need to whip it around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully we can, I'll see you at the next ASCAP Awards. If it's in person, I'm going to try to come back as often as I can for those it's, things. It's, it's not, per, it's, it's this year again. Is, um... It was virtual. I think BMI was in person, but uh, ASCAP, I think was still virtual. Yeah. yeah. I know Shame. Dom was texting me. He's like, are you here? I was like, no, I'm not here. <laughs> no <laughs> they have ipads on people's table settings i know we're just on top of a dummy like a like a, a mannequin and <laughs> that's going to be turned into like a weird david lynch cronenberg thing yeah. but <laughs> it's happening yeah. all right lauren well i'll let you go thank you again so much and my uh, pleasure Kai. lovely talking to you again <laughs>